I consider E4 E5 the best chess opening for beginner and intermediate players. And in this video, I'm showing you the most popular chess opening with an E4 E5. Let's go. The main move for white here is. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's knight on three. And after knight c6, we will cover the Scotch game, the Italian game, the fried liver, and the Spanish. Let's get started with bishop c4. After knight of six, which is the move I recommend you play with the black pieces, why does the option of the fried lever? This opening is scary and many opponents are trying to avoid it like crazy. Some players even play h6 here just to avoid it one for all. But you just need to know that after this, that you need to know one move. And it's the move d4. Why? Because there is a knight uh, and the bishop pointing, pointing here. This would be a fork. So you have to stop it. There is no way to do it with the pieces. So you have to use this pawn. Sacrifice the pawn for a higher purpose. Now things can go really bad for, y uh, for black. After pawn takes, if black is simply capturing back the pawn. Because here there is the brilliant sacrifice, knight take of seven. After king takes, there is the double check. The king and the knight are both under attack. And here you can lose the game in 10 moves after king g8, because now this is checkmate. The best move in this position is, of course, not king g8, but king here. And now there is a problem. There is this knight that is under attack, is attacked one and two times, and is protected just twice. So what is white doing? Attacking it one more time. So now three attackers. And now there are two ways to protect this knight one more time. One is knight b4 and one is knight here. Honestly, knight here is the main move, but it's really passive here. You keep going with moves like d4. I love it. You're opening up the center because this king is in the middle of the board. So here, the more file you open, the more that king is going to be weak. And after pawn takes, you take here because you have to move the knight, so you trade it. And then you keep you go just with the bishop out. You're going to play long castle, rookie one, and you're going to checkmate this king really quickly. After the most active move, knight b4, which is protecting, but also attacking this pawn, which would be a fork, I suggest you play the simple move bishop b3. So you keep attacking here, you are protecting, and what would, do you want to play next? Let's say your opponent plays some random move, you play a3, this knight has the move, and then you win the knight easy club so the only move here is to play c6 protecting this knight one more time but after bing boom here you can play again the move d4 the same idea as before after pawn takes the knight is under attack you take here the pawn has to take and then you develop this bishop you're ready to go long castle to bring the other rook to the e file and you're going to have a lots of fun really here a piece down here but it's no risk you have to play this the engine says you are nearly winning so please enjoy this so this is how Black can go wrong, but how should black play? Let's see, if you face this with the black pieces, I recommend you play the only move. Knight a5. So you are right now a pawn down, but you're going to take that pawn back later. For example, now you're attacking the bishop. If the bishop sim simply goes back here, you can simply take and then take the pawn. Now you're attacking this knight and you're ready to develop all your pieces. There is not this sacrifice because there is not a bishop that is spinning. For example, I mean, this sacrifice now makes simply no, no sense because um, first of all, you can also go back with the knight because there is no longer a bishop pinning it. So uh, yeah, just play knight here and then you develop your pieces. You bring a rook here and you have made an artificial castle. That's why the main move after knight a5 is to play bishop b5 check because you want to try. Um, one of the main moves is to play c6 here and after pawn takes, pawn takes, the bishop can retreat in many different squares. So let's say bishop e2 and black is a pawn down. Uh, but as a very nice development, but is, this is not what I suggest you play. I think there is something way simpler. And this bishop d7, instead of c6 here, you just play bishop d7. The point is that after the very simple move bishop take d7, you play queen takes. And yeah, here you can see what you're going to play. You're going to take this pawn next, then you're going to go along castle to bring the knight back here because the knight is very strong on c6. The knight on the side is a bit mm, not doing much. Uh, and in the air is really important because it's protecting this pawn and making your long castle stronger, more solid. After bishop d7, this move is really bad, but many beginners or also intermediate player that will not be prepared will play this move automatically because trades are good. The best move in this position is queen e7. And now you have to know two things. Okay, first of all, your move. <laughs> you have to know that you play just bishop here. You just uh, need to give priority to development. Don't take back the pawn. Uh, don't trade. You just develop. Bishop here, very solid. And now your opponent can go extremely wrong. If they take, 
take back with the queen and I say, oh, another free pawn, I'm also protecting this one. And here you say, oh yeah, amazing. You just take back the pawn and now, uh, well, you're threatening f6, for example, you can go long castle, uh, you're threatening also knight here, attacking, winning a tempo against the queen. Um, and here white can go completely off the road by playing queen take g7, it seems another free pawn, you're also attacking this rook here, you simply play long castle and here white is already completely nearly lost if they take here with the knight you have an you have an amazing tactic you have bishop f6 you're attacking the queen and this knight will be hanging so you win a piece after queen take f7 well already you can take a free piece but you can also first improve the rook and then take the piece later anything wins and after the simple castle you're going to love this you first take here and then you bring the rook attacking the queen the queen has to move and now you attack the queen one more time and after the queen is moved you go with the rook sacrifice. This is just an example how the game can end really quickly for you. They take and you bring the queen in, they go here and now you bring the knight. You're threatening checkmate. If the rook goes here, you have mate in two moves. And the only move is queen here. And now you play the amazing move rook h8. Again, if rook here, you sacrifice the other rook and after this, you give checkmate. If they play rook here, the final move of the game is going to be f5. You're attacking the queen. This queen doesn't have a check here because there is the knight. And the queen cannot stay on this diagonal to protect the checkmate on g2, right? So they will just resign here. Two more moves here. If your opponent goes short castle, you simply take this pawn. You're attacking this knight. You are all right. If they go with the knight here protecting this pawn, now you go for a second pawn sacrifice, which is really amazing. You take here, queen takes by giving a check, and now it seems like you lost a piece, but you have the move c6. The queen is protecting the knight. After pawn takes, you, uh, sorry, you take with the knight, uh, because if not, this pawn is hanging, you don't want to lose this pawn. So instead you take with the knight and you are protecting the pawn, and you let this pawn go. Now you are two pawns down, but this queen can be lost really badly. So, knight here, knight d4, you're attacking this pawn, the most sensible move is to go for castle. Now you play rook b8. Here usually there are even some uh, draw repetition scheme where white is just trying to repeat the move. So for example, after this, you can just go and try to repeat the moves because this is the best move. But you have even better. In this position, I suggest you play the move knight d7. This knight is going to control some very important squares. For example, let's say a random move, the knight goes back. Actually, no, I don't like this move because after this, you just take here and the king is going to be very weak. So I don't like. Let's say the knight go the knight is under attack, by the way. So that's why we are moving the knight. Let's say the knight moves here. You attack the knight one more time. The knight goes there. And now you play knight c5. And the point is that this knight, that's why you play knight d7 knight here. Because this knight is controlling some very important squares. So this queen is starting to lack squares. The queen cannot go here, cannot go here, here, here. Uh, cannot go here because there is the queen. So it's just, cannot go here, cannot go here. So the queen is just this square here, right? But okay, let's say they play a run of move. Now you attack the queen, the queen goes there, and now you take on c2. You're giving a fork, and the best move in this position is knight take f5, which is quite ridiculous because you can simply capture the queen. So, from now on, you're going to have lots of fun against the fried liver by playing the move knight a5, and after this, you give a check. Uh, sorry, you don't give a check, you cover the check. Okay, all good, very funny, but what if they don't go fried liver? Well, if they play knight here protecting this pawn, you have a very fancy move you can take. And after knight takes, you go d4, d5. You're going to win back the piece, you're going to have a very nice position. And here you don't have to worry about the bishop sacrifice, because this move looks good but is bad. You can simply take back with the king and after this, it was just a trade of pieces. But now you go for the strong center, you have two strong pawns. After uh, this knight check, you go here, and now you simply will keep going with moves like h6, bishop here, king h7, and rook f8. You will do an artificial castle, you have the bishop here, a strong center, you have a better position. Even the engine says minus 1.2, incredible. That's why in this position, the main move is to play d3, so to protect with a pawn. Now you just develop your bishop, they castle, and you castle. And now they have two options. Either they go for the gioco piano. The gioco piano is when you just develop, a, you develop all your pieces very slowly, you know, uh, without going for crazy aggression of the center. So with knight c3. Here, I just recommend you to, no, to know one move. 
uh, to know the move h6. You really want to avoid this bishop to get to g5. I will show you how I won so many games when I was young. So I uh, let's say they played the move d6, bishop g5, you're pinning this knight, they do a random move like bishop there, this is really bad. And now you are exploiting the pin by going with the knight on d5. And the threat is very big, you want to take here, and then they have to take with the pawn and the king is going to be really weak. Let's say they play h6, which has the idea to kick this bishop back, but here you exploit the momentum and you go with the intermezzo. Knight take f7, f6. After pawn takes, you take the pawn attacking the rook, the rook moves, and now you just have to bring the queen to the party. So you move the knight away, and one of my opponents literally played the move bishop e6 here, which is just helping me so much. I traded and then slided my queen all the way to g4, the bishop was before controlling that, and after king moves, this is checkmate. That's why you remember, after the move knight here, you just play the move h6, you just avoid bishop here once for all, and you will be alright. c3 is what is called the Italian game. Basically, they are playing a little bit more aggressive, because one day, they want to go for the move d4. For the center. And here, one move that I recommend you to play, I have lots of fun by playing it, is the move d5. You go for the center immediately, but if you want to play this line, um, if not, you can go for the most solid move d6. You need to be ready to sacrifice a pawn. After pawn takes, you take with the knight, and now they play rook e1. This is the main move. They are attacking this pawn two times. And how do you defend it by playing bishop g4? Now attention, you're pinning this knight, by the way, so this knight cannot take because the queen is hanging. After the move h3, you don't take here, but you go back. You want to keep the bishops. Bishops in open position are really OP, overpowered. G4 is a problem, because after this, they win a pawn. They take here, knight takes, and rook takes. But in this position, you can have so much fun. Let's say you play the move C6, because you have to protect this, and then you're, you're going on with moves like bishop here, king h8, f5. And this is amazing. For example, let's say they take, you, uh, you, you play, okay, this is in between the moves, really fun, they go back, and then you take back doesn't really change much. In this position, it's not so easy for them to develop because they, if they bring the knight here, you're already potentially winning a pawn. So let's say they play knight on the side, which is a way to develop the knight slowly by going on c2, e3. Here you play the strong move f5. If they take, they are really, really in big danger. You take back with the rook, you slide the queen to h4, you bring the other rook, you're going to attack like a crazy man. If they push, trying to block the position, you keep going with your pawn. Imagine having a pawn on f3 and then bringing the queen here, taking this pawn. This is completely crazy. It's, I love this position. I would play this every single time. But it's up to you guys. If you don't want to go for craziness, you can just play the move d6 and you're going to develop all your pieces really slowly. Bishop here, this, bring the rook to the center. Go for the other line, please. Let's move to a new line. D4, this is the scotch game. Uh, it's quite easy to know what to play against. You are going to take here. You just have to avoid a few traps to not lose in six moves or give checkmate in six moves. So after this, they will take. And now I don't know why many players are just taking here and letting the queen join the party. Usually the queen out too early is bad. But in this position, this queen cannot be attacked. You need a knight to go to c6 to exploit uh, the bad queen in the center. So do not take here. Instead, develop a piece. Play the move bishop c5. Here you have to know a very important idea. Here, after knight takes, you don't want to take back. Because then you have double pawns. So for example, a, a move that would be possible would be to take here. But after this, you're, you cannot castle. This handgame is a bit better for white. So the move you play in this position is amazing. Queen of six, you're threatening the scholar mate. Uh, well, if they fall into it, you're very happy. Uh, if they try to cover, for example, queen here, you just, you can, you can already think about taking there, you can take here. I think this is very good because you also created a weakness here, you're taking back with the pawn, and you're going to develop really quickly your pieces and you will be all right. That's why after bishop c5, the main move of white is to play the move bishop e3. Oh, by the way, another way to protect this knight that is now attacked twice is to play the move c3. I think this is how it went the game of SQC versus most critical, which is one of the most chess famous chess game of all time, uh, I think over 16 million views on YouTube, uh, I think SQC took here and then got checkmated. Don't do like him and, well, you can do like most critical with the black pieces, that's very good. Anyway, the, best, the most played move here is to defend this knight with the 
bishop. But now you keep going with the move queen of six, you're attacking it a third time. Remember, if knight takes, what are you going to play? You're not taking back here. Not with the queen, but you're taking here. You're threatening mate again. And after pawn takes, you're going to take here. I like with the pawn, you know why? Because usually it's not good to develop, uh, sorry, to double, to have double pawns. But here, this, this double pawns helps you to develop the bishop. Those pawns in the center of the board are weak and you're attacking the pawn on b2. So here you have really a nice position. That's why the main move here is to play the move c3. And here you're just going to play knight out. You're going to develop all your pieces. And now where you can play so many moves. Bishop here, g3, uh, queen f3. Um, usually they will try to develop this bishop. This is something. So either fianchetto or bishop c4. And what you have to think is about a plan how to develop your pieces. There are different ways. First of all, you could, you could go for the move d5, attacking the center and being ready to develop this bishop. Also, another idea that I really like is to play sometimes the move b6 and bishop b7. So you have a bishop on fianchetto on the long diagonal and you will be attacking the center. Usually you castle short but sometimes you can also cast along. For example, after this, e5, you can also think about developing your pieces and go for long castle. But usually, short castle is the most solid approach. It's time for us to move on to the main, main line. This is considered one of the best chess opening. I think this would be definitely a seer chess opening. Bishop on b5, the Rui Lopez. This is what I play with the white pieces, and I suggest you a very simple i by the way i play this opening with the white and the black pieces of course and i suggest you a very simple approach with black you play the move bishop c5 uh, you're developing a piece it's extremely simple first of all do you know what is the idea of the Rui lopez your opponent is attacking the knight that is protecting the pawn but in this situation they cannot take here and after this take this pawn because you have the strong move queen d4 you're attacking the knight you're even threatening mate and you're attacking this pawn so they are in big trouble. In this position, there are two options for white. Castle or c3. I would say those are the main, main moves that you will uh, see lots of times. Let's play c3. I think that I, I've made a speedrun and beginner intermediate player like this move. Because they want to go for the move d4. What you do? You develop your knight and you're attacking this pawn. And now once they go with the move d4, I played a few games in this variation, you just take and usually they take back with the pawn, which is actually a mistake because now you give a check. And how are they going to cover? Doesn't matter how they're going to cover, you can just capture this pawn and be very happy. Then you have to, the only thing that you have to know is that you have to be very quickly, for example, bishop here, you take this pawn. You have to be really quickly castling, um, going for, for sure castle and putting your king to security because if not you might have trouble uh, with your king for example after this i think i like to trade everything here and then to go for castle so you got trade of the knight you took a bishop which is good in open positions and you're going to have a really fun position with an extra pawn your knight c3 i think is the most natural move because it seems like this pawn is also protected but you can simply take a pawn because this knight is pinned if they play queen e2 trying to pin your knight you just can respond with queen e7 and after castle you're going to take here and your pawn up you're trading the queens which is very good here take back with the knight and then play c6 d5 bishop here castle you have an extra pawn you're happy actually you have two extra pawns after this <laughs> after knight takes the main move is to play castle here you take with the bishop because if you take with the knight you might be uh you might be in trouble i mean if you get a bit too greedy here you can end up being in trouble so because for example bishop a7 is now stopping you from castling if you even take this rook there is rookie one knight ah this is ugly do not play this okay so after castle we don't take with the knight and then be greedy but we have to understand that we have to be quick and castle so you take with the bishop pawn takes and now you castle i know that there is a free pawn but again uh, if we take here i think there is just queen e1 which is giving a check and winning the knight so we simply castle and now if we if our opponent plays a random move like rookie one now we are very happy to take a second pawn we are attacking the queen attacking the bishop all good so after bishop c5 c3 knight here d4 pawn takes to take back with the pawn is not really good because in many cases you will be winning a pawn out of the opening and the main move is to play the move e five now you have to move this knight and the best square to go is for the knight on d5 
or e5? Actually, they're both really okay. Let's consider knight d5. It seems a little bit more solid because the knight can land on uh, b6 if, if it's attacked one more time. By the way, the main move is to take here and now you give a check. Now, there are many ways to cover this check. Knight here, which is the very natural move, is really bad because after bing boom bam, you're giving a check, winning the rook. Ha. Enjoy your time. And here you have a very simple way to move on. You trade the bishop and then you castle and uh, equal material, but your opponent has more space in the center. Uh, well, two pawns strong in the center, so you have to attack it. d6 is a very smart move. You're going to develop this bishop next, and you're going to trade a central pawn, which is very good for you. We go back at move three, because another variation that you have to know is when they play the move castle. Now, I suggest you to play a very funny move. Knight d4, what are you doing? You're going with the knight in the center. First of all, many of them will just take this pawn because they think it's free, and you will win a piece. <laughs> but... If they understand that this bishop is hanging, to me it happened really so many times. Uh, if they understand that that bishop is hanging, uh, they will either go back here, which uh, it's possible. In this case, you just take there. This, you don't get the scholar mate, you play knight here. And then you're going to castle and have a very normal position. But the main main move is to take this knight. Now you take back with the bishop and they play c3. You go back all the way, please. Don't let them win another tempo after the move d4. And they go for the center. Now, in this position, I won so many times with one counter trick. Because they try to trick you and you counter trick them. I'll show you. So they're attacking this pawn, but you can win a tempo by playing the move c6. Now they go with the bishop here. Because I'll show you. If you play just the move d6 here. Okay, you cannot even play. <laughs> but okay, after d6, let's say you can play the move d6. After pawn takes, pawn takes, they're going to trade the queen and you're going to lose the possibility to castle. So c6 is a very important move. And now they go here and you play d6. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, so many times they took here on f7. Because they think, oh, this is a typical trap, you lose the queen. But they forgot that after king takes, queen takes, I can still take with a bishop. I won a piece so many times and won the game in this way. A good way to keep going with the pieces is to try to develop this knight and this bishop, but it's not so easy to do so. For example, a knight here could be an idea. You just keep with a very simple knight there. And now you're already attacking this pawn, right? This pawn is already hanging. It's not easy to deal with it. You might think that this, this, the pawn was already hanging before, but I don't recommend you to go take it because you are a bit behind on development. For example, bing, boom, bang, this. Maybe even queen b3, knight here winning a temp on you. I don't think this is good. So knight f6, it's good. Now you're always threatening that. After rookie one protecting, they say like, oh, you, they are still not scared about you taking the pawn because after all the trades, there is still knight here. You have to move this bishop one more time and then there is bishop f4, putting really lots of pressure on you. You still didn't castle. The move e5 is incoming. Do not play this. Instead, you simply go for the move castle and now you are threatening to take this pawn. So they have to play the move knight f3. They are protecting here, but now it could be so much fun. After pawn takes, pawn takes, you can go with the move Knight take e4, because after uh, rook takes, you just go with the fork. I love this idea, and it works so many times. If you guys enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe. And if you missed it out, this is the presentation about all the other sideline of e45. Queen h5, the failure defense, the Damiano defense, the king's gambit, the central game, and many more. Make sure to like and subscribe. I said it again, but do it. Bye, guys. <laughs>